Class, show me with your fingers the degree. Okay, so blank plus blank equals four, correct? How many do they give us? Count with me, raise that go. <coughs> Partner A, tell partner B, what's the missing one? <laughs> we just counted four, right? Yeah. Tell your partner what the four are. I'm going to write the 4 how many times? Twice, because it says multiplicity of 2. Now, what I wrote out here is essentially factored form. What did I write down, class? Do you remember back in quadratics, there was factored or intercept form, which just has parentheses, and we did P and Q? Well, in this problem, there's like, I don't know, you can just think of it as like P, Q, R, and S. Okay? So I'm going to put those here. So those are our fours. Okay, now you, we just did today's lesson when we talked about complex conjugates. That means in this yellow, I can write what? Yellow, yellow. 3 plus 2i. And this one I can write... 3 minus 2i. Because complex conjugates come in? Pairs. Pairs, the imaginary friend. That's what we did all of that, guys. You guys see how it comes together? All right. Now, find a polynomial, so they don't imply, but basically standard form. Basically, we have to multiply all this out. Does that make sense? Let's multiply all this out. It's going to get crazy. x minus 4 times x minus 4. <coughs> Class multiply. Ready, set, go. Okay, so my answer in blue, x squared minus 8x plus 16. <laughs> for 15 years straight, this is the number one mistake for students. What do you think the mistake would be? They're not going to distribute the negative sign all the way through. So this is going to give us x, what? Minus 3. negative 2i, what is this one going to become? <coughs> x minus 3 plus 2i. This is going to get crazy. Are you guys seeing what's happening? No? What do you think my box is going to look like? Count the number of terms. Ready, set, go. Count again. 3 times 3 is? That was unrecorded. <laughs> School year 2019-20. <laughs> Class of 2020. So I have x minus 3 minus 2i and x minus 3 plus 2i. You're doing the same thing as you did over here, but you're going to multiply first, and then you're going to combine like terms. Does that make sense? Okay, let's do it together. 
And what's new to you is the i. Just pretend i is like an x, okay? x times x is negative 3 times x, x times 2i. Now, you know it's just going to be all together, right? 2i x. Okay? Boys, multiply. Negative 3 times x. Boys. Boys. Girls? Okay, whatever we chose as our format or how you placed it, you could have written something like 2xi would be acceptable, but the order in which you write them be consistent now. Girls, continue. Negative 4 i squared. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so let's see what we got. Now, this is getting pretty complicated, so what I like to do is I put check marks after I focus on the box. Are, are there any other x squareds? No. So just x squared. Are there any uh, just x's? What does that become? You're adding, you're adding. Negative 6x. 2ix. Are there any others that have i and an x? This one, right? You're just looking at the coefficients. 2 plus negative 2 or 2 minus 2 is 0. So I can cross these off. But again, I'm putting a check mark to show that I've addressed the box. Trust me, the boxes are going to get bigger. Are there any other, um, let's do these two first. <coughs> 6i and a negative 6i. Zero. So again, I'm going to put a check on the box. All right, let's see what you know. i is equal to what? No. What is i? Oh, my goodness. Square root of negative 1, right? Yeah. And it's squared. Essentially, what these do is they cancel. Let's just say you don't understand it that all of this is equal to negative 1 on the right side. Let's say you don't know that. Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 basically says that there are. Um, they're a pair, right? They're both inside. And so there's a little 2 right here that says if they're in pairs, they can come out. Does that make sense? So basically, i squared is equal to what? Negative 1. You might want to write that on your formula sheet. This is just a fact. I'm trying to explain very quickly the math behind it. So if you have negative 4 times negative 1, your answer is what? positive 4. So all of this, negative 4 times i squared, i squared is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So I have 4 and 9, that becomes what? 13. Guess what? I put the 4 here, 4 plus 9 is 13, and I still have this one x squared minus 8x plus 16. So now i got to multiply the blue times the orange. Are we having fun yet? Is there any shorter way to do this? The answer is no. If you want to go to four-year university, there's no way of just waking up. Hi, Jade.
Alexis, let's multiply. You'll do the first row, and then we'll call on your best friend. Alexis, x squared times x squared. Keep going. Yes. Go on, pick another student. Speak. Yes. Keep going. Multiply. Oh, uh, 42 times. 48. Squared. I can't math. I can't math. I can't <laughs> Go. 16x squared. Negative 96x. Pick the next person. <coughs> All right, Catherine, we just have to um, combine like terms and then we have our answer. What does that give you? I went ahead and put x to the fourth for you. Okay. Keep going. Tell me, tell me. How much? Seventy-seven. And these two? Negative 200 x plus 208. Okay, if you guys think about what we have as our answer here, this is a polynomial in standard form, and basically what you've been doing is you've been going this direction, right? You've been factoring the polynomial using rational roots theorem, right? Xbox method. But now they're kind of already telling you the factors. They're already telling you the zeros, and you just have to do lots of multiplying to get to that answer.